Hey, it's Wayne Fox and I have another little Lightroom video. This is about the three different types of status indicators that are available in Lightroom to let you manage and track your workflow. To see the choices, if you hit T to show your toolbar, down at the bottom you'll see that you can set a flag for an image, you can set a star rating for an image, and you can set a color label for an image. If those aren't showing in your toolbar, then if you click over on the little arrow on the far right, that's where you can toggle those off and on. If there's one you do not use, you might want to turn it off so it doesn't show. For example, I do not use flagging, but I do use stars and color labels. So I turn that off. I'm going to leave it on for now. There are basically four ways you can set a status to a file using one or all of these status available status sets. One of those, however, is often not on by default. And so to enable that, you can go up to the View menu go to view options and down in the bottom you can say show the rating footer and notice I'm in the grid view and now the rating this adds a footer to each of the grids and then you can turn color label on and this will enable the fourth way to set a label the most obvious way to set a label is to click on the image and set it at the bottom you can set the pick flag or the unpick flag you can set the reject flag or turn it off you can click any one of the stars to set the star and of course you can have multiple and, and as a matter of fact you can have all three of these status indicators on the same image so here you can see that I've got the as set as picked I've got three stars and I have it green you can also do it in the actual cell itself the advantage of this is that you don't have to select the, the image to set it if you just click on the flag it will set the flag on click to turn it off if you right click you can get to the rejected option and clicking it will turn it off you can also click one of the dots to set a star rating and of course you can click the label to set one of the colors another way you can set the flag is to right click on an image in a, a cell and you can set the flag you can set the star rating and you can set the color label this way So the fourth way is actually probably the most useful for, especially for flags and star ratings, and that is keystrokes. The P key will set the pick flag, and the U key will unpick it, and the X key will set the reject flag, and again the U key will unpick the reject flag. The numbers one through five will set the star rating from 1 to 5 accordingly and 6 sets the images red 7 is yellow 8 is green 9 is blue notice that purple does not have a keyboard shortcut so the only way to set a image to the color purple is to explicitly select the image and click on it to take this one step further, however, a lot of times you're cooling a large amount of images and you want to go through them quickly. And to do that, you can open up an image and if you put the caps lock key on, setting any one of these uh, status indicators will make that change to the file and then it will move to the next image. So if I hit a star rating of four, it will go to the next image. If I hit a pick, it will go to the next image. If I hit a color label, it will go to the next image. So I can literally go through images very quickly setting star ratings and it will go from one to the other and if you're calling a large amount of images usually the pick unpick flag and reject is a good step to narrow them down and then once you've done that you might want to take all the ones you pick and actually assign a star rating to those and pretty soon you're down to a subset of your images that you feel is a workable amount this also works in the grid view if you're on an image and you use a keystroke you'll notice that it moves and, and selects the next image automatically for you if your caps lock key is on and you choose one of these status indicators last it's also possible to set a large number of images at the same time if i click on an image and i shift click on a sequence of images anything that I change in one image will be applied to the other and it doesn't matter which method I use so if I were to click here and change this to red 
it would change all of those images to red. If I click on this image and change the star, it will change them all to star. I can also click on an image and then command or control on Windows click and cl click a non-sequential series of images and of course the same thing works. I can click down here to apply a color, star rating, and of course it only applies to those um, images that I've selected. So very easy to apply them. Color labels are unique in the fact that they don't have an inherent meaning. Obviously pick and uh, unpick and reject and star ratings, they have kind of implied meaning and you're basically trying to rate a level of the image and trying to narrow down your selection. Red doesn't mean anything other than red and it, so it can really mean anything that you want. And so that makes color labels kind of unique. What's a little deceiving is that color labels, even though they're called color labels, what they are is indicating an actual IPTC metadata label that's available in the file. And it gives you a way to set those labels in the file very quickly. But the label itself doesn't have anything to do with the color. If you go up to the metadata menu and you go color label set, you'll see that there are more than one. If I go edit those sets and you'll see the Lightroom default, the label itself is simply the name of the color. But if you go to the review status set, you'll see that it's actually something a little more useful as far as maybe a workflow. Now, as soon as I did that, notice that all my little labels lost their color and now they're uh, what remains is a white label. When that little label indicator is white, that means that the label has been set to something other than what's available in my color label set. So what Lightroom does is it stores the label itself and then when you look at an image, if the label stored in the metadata matches the, the, text, the label text of one of the colors, it will display that color. Otherwise, it will display this white. So the white's telling me that I've set a label for this, but that label is not one of the five in my current set that match a color. If I go over and I show a metadata here, you can see what I'm talking about. Let's change this label to retouching needed. And of course that was set to be blue. Now if I show the metadata on that image, you'll see that the label itself is now retouching needed. It's not blue. If I go to one of these others that are white, you'll notice that, that the label is the color that we put in there to start with. So that means that this color, this label of red is not available in our current color label set but we do have a label in there. Now it's also possible to type in a manual label. I can go to an image here and I can actually give this a label and it will stay there. And now you notice this white tells me that I've set a label, but again, it's not in my label set. If I go to the next image, and if I click the labeled word here, you'll notice I get a pop-up which lets me set the label as well and anything I put in by custom becomes a recent entry. So this my label is an entry. So there are a lot of ways you can rate and use labels besides just the colors. One of the issues that people have a lot of times is that they've got a lot of labels set and then they discover this feature and so they wanna come along and they wanna give those labels some interesting names that are more useful. And so typically they'll go and they'll edit the metadata set and they'll say, okay, I want to change red to toss. And all of a sudden red disappears and they have the white label. And they want to change blue to export. And by golly, they're gone as well. And so one of the challenges is how can you customize these label names with something more meaningful if you've already applied a lot of color labels in your database? It's actually not that difficult to do. And I think thought I would just show how you can do that very quickly. So all we need to do is show our filter bar, which we do by using the backslash key, which is the one above the return key. On the far right, we're going to say we want to search metadata based on label. And now you'll see that our colors are now there. So all we need is make sure our toolbar shows at the bottom. We just click each color on it. We select all and we click the corresponding color at the bottom. So there's blue, select all, this is green, so click green. 
This is purple. Select all. Click purple. Red. Select all. Click red. And finally, we should have yellow somewhere. Yep, yellow. Select all. Click yellow. Now you notice that the new label descriptions we put are now showing as a label. If you use other label names, and this is what comes in handy with a white label, you'll notice that you can search based on those in this uh, label field up here. So you could use a lot of custom names and not worry about if they match with a color for various purposes in your workflow. But anyway, now if we go back and we turn this filter off and we now have our colors back, but the color now corresponds to the new description that we got it, that we gave it. So very quick to get the colors back on your images if you decide to use a custom set and they disappeared on you. And now that you understand a little more about labels, you might find some creative ways to use that label field beyond just storing a color, but even, even beyond storing the five in your default set, or even perhaps using multiple sets within Lightroom. The other thing I wanted to show is how useful this can be. Let's go to all photographs again. Let's, let's go ahead and set these four to be yellow. Okay, we're gonna set these to be green. We're gonna set these to be blue. Now, we've already decided that yellow means what? Yellow means we need to go to the develop module. So at this point, if we wanna proceed on the, the workflow, we would typically select a folder of images uh, that we need to do. And then we would, once we've got that folder of images, we would select one of the steps that we're going to perform. In this case, we're going to select the yellows because those are the ones we need to develop. We'll go to the develop module. And once we finish developing it, all we've got to do is change the flag down here in the bottom. And it can either be to use and of course, as soon as we do that, it leaves our film strip, or it might be we need to retouch it. So as we're developing these to move them into the next step, we just have to change this label. And once we do that, we're, we know we've completed all the work that needs to be done for that particular set of labels. If we turn the filter back off and go back to our grid menu, and so now we've got to find the ones we need to retouch, those we label blue, and we would actually do the same thing. In this case, we might have to open it in Photoshop and then save it. So we would open it in Photoshop. Once we save it and it comes back in, then we would do the same thing though. Now we're ready to print this or to use it, one of the two. And we would work through them one at a time and we would change the status as we went until we've completed all those steps. And so now what we have when we're done with this is all of our images have either been rejected or they're ready to use or they're ready to print. So that's a little way to use the labels to really ease through your workflow. I, I know some workflows are more complicated than others, but once you understand how these labels can be used, there are a lot of ways to customize this to be able to speed up your workflow. The last thing I would mention, it's even possible to use more than one set of labels. I'm not going to get into that extensively, but you might have a set of labels that applies to a wedding workflow and a set of labels that applies to a portrait workflow. So let's say that this set of labels was our portrait workflow. Let's go back here and we're going to go to edit. And you notice this says review status edited because we've changed it. If we want to make that permanent, we need to usually, we actually need to save it as a new preset. And so we'll call that portrait workflow. Now it could be that we want wedding workflow to be different. So the only thing that's important is that none of the names can labels can be identical. If we want to make sure that when we select one of the colors, we're only finding the one based on the current workflow we've enabled, we can't use retouch in both wedding and in portrait. We have to make sure that one might say retouching needed, one might say retouch. If we said to print in both of them, then when you enable one label set, you would end up with some images labeled in both of the two workflows. That's a little confusing and it's a little more advanced. I don't know. If, I think that if you're far enough into Lightroom that you're using labels to this extent, you can probably kind of get my drift and figure out what I'm talking about. So anyway, that's how you can use the 
status indicators to speed up your workflow in Lightroom and hopefully helps you understand what labels actually are. And they're really not colors, but they're an actual label. And the colors are just easy ways to indicate in the view of, of which one you might have selected. Well, thanks for listening.